everyone, <laughs> this is Lilian and in this video today I'm gonna be talking about why I went vegan. So to start off, you know, first um, I've always been a person who really really cares about my health. I've always practiced a lot of sports and I've always eaten, you know, what I perceive to be a healthy diet. For most of my life I have uh, eaten uh, an omnivore diet, which means fish, uh, dairy products, meat, um, yeah, fish and meat are the same, but of course veggies and potatoes, nuts, seeds, legumes, basically omnivorous. It was about um, a year and a half ago that I started looking into veganism because of the, obviously, yeah, the health benefits. I wanted to be healthy and lose some weight. So I started to look into, okay, what do vegans eat? I've actually always myself had kind of like a judgmental, you know, relationship with, you know, vegans before I became one myself, that they are angry, they're judgmental, and they're just super hippie people who, you know, tree-hugging hippies <laughs> who eat nothing but carrots and lettuce. But anyways, I started to look into the vegan uh, diet um, or lifestyle, and I came across some amazing documentaries and I will link all of the documentaries in the description below if you want to check them out. That would be pretty awesome. So I started watching, uh, I think it was first I started watching Forks Over Knives, which is a documentary that is all about plant-based um, eating and how good it is for your body versus how bad animal products are for you meat and dairy products and eggs and I was quite shocked to learn much of the stuff that I you know know today and the reason why I'm still vegan. For example we are all told you know you need meat to get protein and B12 vitamins. I was so shocked to learn how much I had been lied to and deceived my whole life. Um, so obviously you don't need meat for protein. There are lots of other sources. For example, some of my favorites are tofu, red lentils, and uh, beans are really, really lovely. Milk, on the other hand, uh, you know, obviously the calcium myth, you need milk to have strong bones. Not exactly. It does contain calcium, that is correct, and uh, lots of other vitamins. The only problem with milk is that when it enters the body, it makes the body acidic. And the only way our bodies can neutralize that acidity is by pulling calcium out of our bones to neutralize that acidity. Quite shockingly, here in Denmark, we have a lot of people who uh, drink milk and eat cheese. Um, we're one of the highest rated countries in the world to eat and uh, consume dairy products. Funny enough, we also have the highest rate of osteoporosis, where your bones easily fracture. Coincidence? I think not. Uh, eggs are a whole other thing. I mean, you know, they can be a good source of protein, but honestly, we're talking about eating a hen's period. And that is what eggs are. It's a part of a hen's uh, menstruational cycle. And, you know, I know this before, and I would still fucking, you know, smear this shit on my face for a face mask or fry it up as uh, for scrambled eggs and stuff. The only problem with eggs is it contains shit tons of cholesterol and our bodies by themselves already produce cholesterol. So there is no need for us to be consuming it from external sources. 
The only thing I had a really hard time with, like food-wise, was to, you know, drop cheese. Oh God, heavenly cheese. And you can quote me when I say, I absolutely love the taste of fish, of, you know, meat, of, and especially of cheese. I was the biggest cheese head ever. I would like sprinkle it on everything and stuff. But cheese, unfortunately, you know, is not vegan and I have many, many delicious alternatives to uh, cheese that melts and stretches like, you know, cheese would do. Absolutely love it. I had, today I had leek soup with uh, vegan Parmesan on it. Absolutely delicious. But yeah, needless to say, after discovering all of these things about you know, food and how unhealthy animal products actually is for our body. I was quite shocked. One in three meat eaters will get cancer um, because of the the animal induced, uh, you know, animal consumed protein, and many people will get um, colon cancer. People struggle with you know, heart disease and stuff. And these are all diseases that, you know, are cost 93, I think it was 93 to 95% of it is caused by animal products and our consuming animal products. So for me, health was a really, really big part of me switching to veganism. And after I started on my vegan journey, uh, November 2015, and still vegan, going strong, never going back, um, I feel so much better. I lost uh, around uh, eight kilos just from eating differently. And I just feel really good. Uh, my period pains are not as bad as they used to be, for example and I feel much better. I feel a lot more vibrant and healthy and a lot stronger than I used to do. When people eat meat, they don't realize that our bowels are not designed for meat eating. Our um, intestinal system is three times as long as a carnivore's uh, intestinal system. For example, a lion. Lions are pure carnivores, as you know, cats and stuff. Uh, we are not. Our digestive, our digestive system is not meant for meat consumption, unfortunately. Um, that's why we see so many people get constipated, and because meat cannot pass through because um, it's so dense and, and heavy for the body and our um, our bodies aren't meant to you know break down meat as it is vegetables grains fruits and all of these other foods that are very easily for the body to process and get out in the other end yeah so I do have to say <laughs> A few uh, like a few months with me being you know like going to a plant-based diet this is like you know just for <laughs> for your entertainment really um, I started a lot of you think I don't do it but I do I do fart <laughs> and I just started it, it was like you know it was like a fucking you know like I, just, I don't know what happened to my my bowels there was so much air coming out of me almost constantly um, and I had to visit the bathroom to do number two more than like you know two times a day and that I found out later is completely normal um, an omnivorous person I think is like they will not even defecate uh, you know <laughs> a third of what a vegan does because you eat more foods that are highly processable and like goes through faster uh, so that is like a little heads up if any of you guys were considering a vegan uh, diet a plant-based diet uh, but that will pass it will pass with the farting at all but you will have more toilet visits um, on the other hand you have a much healthier body, your bowels are functioning super good. 
Reason number two I became vegan is because animal agriculture is um, one of the leading um, reasons for climate change and global warming. Many people still believe global warming to be a myth. It is not. A documentary I watched about, uh, you know, global warming and all that kind of stuff uh, and how companies are actually tricking people. They are lying to our faces by saying, you know, you need to eat meat, you need to do this, you need to do that, have some more cheese with your meat and cheese and blah blah blah. They are lying to our faces, straight up. Like, there is nothing good about meat or cheese uh, that benefits, you know, nothing about that benefits the environment and it does not benefit our bodies. On the other hand, the earth is in dire straits when it comes to housing all of our, um, all of our animals and all the rainforest is being destroyed for soy fields or corn fields to feed all the billions of animals that get killed every year. I very much uh, recommend you to watch Cowspiracy, which is all about, you know, how companies trick people and how the earth is actually being destroyed at the cost of greed, money, and because we get addicted to stuff like meat, cheese and, you know, dairy, eggs, it is physically addictive to the body. And companies don't care about that. They don't care about your health. <laughs> they don't make money off of well of people who are healthy and well. They want to see us sick so that they can send us to the doctors, give us some pills, and the doctors make money off of prescribing pills, heart medication, whatever, diabetes pills. And then they send us back out and say, oh, you know, uh, now you have these pills, so you just continue eat, you know, your meat and your cheese and your eggs and drink your milk every day. So the whole uh, conspiracy theory of, you know, the world and how the planet is being destroyed, like every day, there's so much forest going to waste uh, because we need to feed all the billions of animals. Um, the oceans have uh, become so bad that if we continue at this rate there will be no fish left in the year 2040. There is no more fish left. It's over. Once the ocean dies, it's over guys. And that's why I became vegan also for the environment because it is our earth. We should love it, protect it and not destroy it. So please watch Cowspiracy if you are interested in learning more about how much water does it actually take to produce a hamburger, how much forest is actually destroyed per second uh, for green pastures, and just in general hear from other people um, like a guy who, who made this documentary who decided to visit Greenpeace, who decided to visit Oceana and all these, you know, you should think organizations that protect the earth but they're all you know bought and paid for and sponsored by the meat industry so if they go there and say you know animal agriculture is the leading cause of deforestation it's the leading cause of ocean dead zones funny enough their funding will stop and they will be you know no longer able to continue their business so it is a tough tough world and it's all about money and it disgusts me <laughs> number three why i chose to become vegan is of course our dear animals ever since i was little i've always loved animals like anyone else and especially you know it wasn't just dogs or cats for me it was you know, birds, snails on the ground, rain, like, you know, earthworms. All animals I could come in contact with are just love and find fascinating and beautiful. 
as we get older, and I was raised on an omnivore diet, um, I learned, you know, some uh, some animals are for food and some are our friends. And I had those blinders on nice and tightly for the most of my life. Uh, and to me, it was, you know, it was like, okay, well, um, we need to eat meat to stay healthy. Um, otherwise, I don't get enough protein. I don't get enough B12 vitamin. So, yeah. To me, it was enough to know I would always go out and buy uh, grass-fed, uh, free-range uh, cows, beef. I would always buy um, organic eggs and stuff like that. But in reality, I learned, sadly, it doesn't matter if it's free range, it doesn't matter if it's grass fed or, you know, how gloriously these animals have had it, which is like practically no animals have good lives in the animal agriculture industry. I was asked this like a while ago, like, but, but you know, what if, what if, you know, like this, this animal had a great life and you, you know, you watched it its whole life and you know, and the day of slaughter reckons and whatever. And I, I've come to the point where I was like, but why kill it if it's not necessary for my body or my survival? Why not, you know, the decent, humane thing would be to let them be free, would be to not harm them, to not kill them because I like the way they taste. That to me is the most uh, powerful thing that I no longer um, see animals as, you know, you're for food, you're for, you know, you're my pet, you're this, you're that. We are all the same. I'm not putting animals and humans, you know, on an equal level and saying, you know, uh, you know, my, for example, a chicken can't make YouTube videos like I can, obviously. But honestly, I can't name six things that a chicken, that I can do better than a chicken, or if, where a chicken isn't more valuable than me. I can't, because a life is a life. We don't, like, I don't want to play God with creatures' lives and say, oh, you know, I feel like a chicken roast, so, you know, I should probably go and kill that chicken over there. It is not my life to take. A really good documentary on uh, the way that humans use animals in the industry for whether it be fashion, tests, uh, testing on animals, and slaughter, uh, and the whole, you know, process of, you know, it comes from a living being. Uh, that wanted to live, but now it's a burger in McDonald's. So, uh, I have only watched, I can't even say I've watched the whole thing because it is, it is gruesome. Uh, and the worst thing about it is, it's not even a horror movie, it's reality. And as some of you might have guessed, it's of course Earthlings. I mean, I knew, you know, animals had to get killed for me to eat before, but when you want to, you know, see the perspective and whether you can say, okay, this is good or not, you have to see it from the oppressed party side. You have to see it through the eyes of an animal because you know, I can sit there and say, oh, you know, I don't want to watch that. I don't, you know, oh, I know what they go through and whatever. You really don't. It is beyond your worst nightmare what animals go through to end up as our food. Not, you know, also speaking for the animals who are in circuses, who are in the zoo, uh, who are kept against their will. I realize there are animal sanctuaries and all that. That's completely different. I support animal sanctuaries a lot. And I am 
really, really excited about the different. Uh, there is one animal sanctuary here in Denmark. I really want to go there and visit and make a donation at one point. One thing is that animals are slaughtered for beef. You know, most people know that they are obviously slaughtered, but most people don't know that, you know, that dairy does hurt animals. Cows are not pregnant uh, hundred, you know, hundred percent of the time. They're only pregnant when they had a baby. So in order to have a sustainable flow of milk for us, we need to keep them pregnant by inseminating them um, with, with you know, bull sperm. And she has a baby, great. We take that baby away from her. And the baby, if it's a boy, send off to slaughter. That is how the whole veal industry works. The veal industry would not be alive and well if it wasn't for the dairy industry. If it's a girl, great. She can become a milking machine just like her mom and get slaughtered when she's five years old and, and her entire body is collapsing under her hooves because her body is exhausted from having babies constantly and giving milk constantly. The trauma of ripping a child or the cow's baby away from it is just, to me, I had no idea that was how it worked. And a cow screaming for its baby is by far one of the most horrible, heart-wrenching sounds I have ever heard in my entire life. Um, and these veals are just, you know, in their little veal crates separated away from their mothers. Mom is, you know, screaming her lungs out for her baby, just as a human mother would if it was her baby that was taken from her when she had given birth to it. And all that milk that was meant for the veal, that was meant for the calf, is of course drinking by us. And on top of that, milk is so bad for us. The egg laying industry is a whole nother thing. Um, you can watch much more about uh, the animals and how they are, how they are used uh, in the human industry. Also, I want to thank uh, here, <laughs> you know, uh, at the end of this video, I wanted to give a big shout out to Gary Urofsky. Uh, I don't know if you will see this, but he is one of the people who made my transition to veganism that much easier. Because he showed me, there is no, like, you know, he shows me black on white what is going on. He speaks with no fear. And he's an amazing person, an amazing uh, vegan animal rights activist and he is also my inspiration and why I am beginning to make you know more videos about veganism here on my channel. His uh, video, uh, the most important speech you'll ever hear, I will link in the description down below guys. Um, trust me, if uh, you agree that cruelty to animals is wrong, if you believe that in your heart, you already agree with the bottom line of veganism, which is to harm no one. You are not becoming vegan because you think you are better than anyone else. You choose to become vegan because you think that you aren't better than anyone else. And together we can change the world, change ourselves, do it for the animals and the planets. Okay guys, <laughs> that was my little um, video on why I am vegan and I really hope that if you have any questions, please link them, uh, write me down below, I'll be more than happy to answer and you know, I'm not judging anyone for eating meat or if you do eat meat or eat dairy, you know what, I was just like you. Um, 
I obviously changed. And I'm no, I'm no, you know, I'm no better than you are. I just uh, realized some things. I realized the truth. And I want you guys to know the truth as well, so that we can actually make an active change uh, for ourselves, the planet, and of course, our animals. So, take good care, guys, and I will see you soon in my next video.